welcome to another episode of Vital Vinyl, the only show dedicated exclusively to my record collection. If you're new here, welcome aboard. If you're a not new here person, welcome back. Today, we're getting into some nerd shit, so if that's not your thing, you might not want to hang around. Or you might want to anyway, just to make fun of nerds and the stuff that they listen to. My main geek of choice is Star Trek. Star Trek. Um, this room that I host this show in, and which I also do my day job of being an artist, is covered in Star Trek memorabilia. Maybe I'll go through a tour of that. Maybe I won't. Probably will. And today we are discussing the albums that I have, though. So let's get right into that. So... Well, on that little iPod behind me, I've got the soundtracks for Star Trek The Motion Picture, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Star Trek III The Search for Spock, Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, Star Trek V The Final Frontier, Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, and then Star Trek Generations, which has the original series crew and the next generation crew, um, Star Trek insurrection star trek oh wait before insurrection is star trek first contact see i'm going chronological because i know all this then star trek insurrection then star trek nemesis did i lose count i don't know i'm doing that thing where i make a show at two o'clock in the morning because it's been kind of busy here it's mardi gras time so dear 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 parades and then I'm going camping again in a couple days. So, yeah, wanted to squeeze out a recording of these since I missed an episode yesterday or today. Today's Friday, yeah. But this will probably be airing on Saturday. None of that matters. What am I talking about? Um, but yeah, on that iPod, I've got all of those soundtracks. But on vinyl, I've got... Star Trek The Motion Picture, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, and Star Trek III The Search for Spock. I used to, back in my pre-Katrina records got all destroyed in the flood days, I also had Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, even though it wasn't really my favorite soundtrack. But I'll probably get into that at some point. Um, I've got on CD, I only have one. I have Star Trek The Motion Picture. It's a remastered version that came out like last year. That's got like all these remastered versions. Wow, who saw that coming? And it's also got the original vinyl soundtrack on it as well i've also got look at this cassettes star trek first contact star trek six the undiscovered country and even a star trek orchestra concert but it's on tdk these are blank tapes as well um, and I just printed up the labels, put it on there. Well, this one I made myself from screenshots and stuff. Uh, that I would like to record onto cassette, but I can't right now because I don't have a cassette recorder. Because my tape deck is currently in the shop, hopefully getting fixed. And hopefully for a lot of, not a lot of money, because I don't have a lot of money. Um, but yeah, it's sounding slightly warbly so I'd like to get it in tip top condition so I can record the things that I have on mp3 onto cassette tapes the only format I don't have is 8 track 
And that's because I've only had an 8-track player for a few weeks since the first one I've ever owned in my entire life. But don't think I haven't looked it up. Um, the only thing I have been able to find is there's someone on eBay. There's only one person. And they have Star Trek The Motion Picture on 8-track. And it looks like it's in really, 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 really good shape. But it's like 35 bucks, so it's a little pricey. Um, especially since all my money is going towards this tape deck. Hopefully getting fixed. Um, but the CD, I've actually got in the CD player, which is why it says Star Trek on display. Which is pretty neat. Um, no other CDs that I put in that display what it is uh, and I thought that maybe it was because most of my CDs are kind of old but I do have I guess my second newest CD is the final Beastie Boys album Hot Sauce Committee Part 2 that came out in like 07, 08, 09, 2010 something like that um, I don't know, it was like right before MCA died, and so that's a pretty new one, but it doesn't have a display on that. Everything else just says no text available, but somehow Star Trek does, so of course it's only fitting that it would. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go around and give a tour of everything that I have Star Trek hanging up in this room. But I do have figures. I guess I'll just discuss it. Or, you know what, maybe I will show. Here we go, gang. All right, here's a little self-indulgence here. It's a picture that I drew from the new show Star Trek Strange New Worlds of Captain Pike and Lieutenant Spock. You know, Spock's a vegetarian. Pike's trying to feed him some Thanksgiving turkey because he's a chef in the show. But um, I ended up... Uh, a friend of mine had the print and took it to Pike and Spock to get it signed at a local comic convention. And apparently Spock really loved it, so I went over, talked to him. He was super, super, super cool. Really nice to me, really nice to my daughter. And he even signed it and put a little personal message on it. And yeah, the guy was just super amazing. Here's my little Wrath of Khan set up. Got figures from the movie. Admiral Kirk, Captain Spock, Lieutenant Savick, Khan, Noonie, and Singh. Got the Enterprise. Got the Reliant that Khan and his crew take over. Pretty awesome. At least I think so. But then it gets a little sad. Because, um, you know, spoiler alert. Spock dies in the engine room. Which cuts to this right here, a little pop figure display, Admiral Kirk and Spock in their last moments together. Um, yeah, wife got me that for a present for some occasion or other. And then she also got this. Oh, look at that. It's got a little love, but with the Star Trek symbol in it. Then here are the posters that I have, um, movie size posters, like 24 by 36. Got one for the TV show. Got one for the motion picture. Got some little Pez dispensers with the original series crew. Got the Enterprise firing on the Millennium Falcon. Take that, Star Wars fans, because... Um, that's a clock that she got me that's made out of a record and I'm not sure it's really showing up, but they etched out the Enterprise and the Reliant fighting each other, also from Star Trek II. Here's a hockey jersey that I have that I think is awesome. Poster for Wrath of Khan, poster for Search for Spock, poster for Voyage Home. Oh, but wait, there's more. If you call now, you'll see my communicator. And my phaser. Don't worry, it's set on stun. So, yeah. Um, there's more stuff around the house, too. But that's just kind of scratching the surface. It's my thing. So, let's see. The first 
Star Trek album that I ever bought was for Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. Wasn't really, or I guess I'm not really too big a fan of that soundtrack. I was looking originally for... I guess I should just hold these up. I was originally looking for Wrath of Khan soundtrack because I loved it. I thought it sounded amazing and I had this idea in my head of doing an animated Star Trek show that I was just going to do stop motion frame animation drawing one page at a time and I guess doing all the voices myself. Um, when I was in eighth grade with my parents camcorder Luckily, I gave up on that because I would probably still be working on it now and be maybe about an hour and a half into it because that's how slow animation works, especially if you're doing everything yourself. Um, but I also wanted this, uh, and it wasn't going to be like with the original crew. It was going to be like uh, the ship, the Excelsior, that like debuts in Star Trek Three, and that like, Sulu eventually becomes captain of in Star Trek 6 but this was going to be like an entirely made up crew that I had but since at the end of the Star Trek 2 soundtrack there is a voiceover of Leonard Nimoy doing the space the final frontier thing and I was going to have that be in it even though that wouldn't make sense because he says these are the voyages of the starship Enterprise and my show is going to be about the Excelsior so but I don't know I was 13 I don't know what I was doing so whatever but I couldn't find that soundtrack and I knew that the Star Trek 3 soundtrack was pretty similar so all I could find was Star Trek 4 I was like yeah well I'm sure that'll be similar too but if you've seen those movies, you know that 2 is pretty dark. 3 is, like, pretty dark as well. Um, and 4 is, like, a lot more upbeat. Like, you know, they come to 20th century Earth. The, you know, whole fish out of water story. Um, you know, it's a fun and funny little romp through time. And the soundtrack is a lot more upbeat and whimsical. So... Yeah, it wasn't really what I was looking for. But I did call around two record stores all around New Orleans and even in the surrounding parishes. And I found a place, I don't know, like about a 20-minute drive. Uh, but to me, like, that was insanely long. And my mom brought me out there, and I got the vinyl copy of Wrath of Khan. And I was so happy, even though, yeah... I was listening to punk rock stuff, but I was like a closeted Trekkie because you could be into comics, but being a Trekkie was not a cool thing. It still isn't like Star Wars is cool and Marvel stuff is cool, but yeah, Star Trek just never really caught on popularity wise. But you know what? That makes it pretty fucking punk rock. So, um, do a lot of fart noises. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I just had two and four on the vinyl back then, but then when I was rebuilding, I got one, two, and three, because like I said, three is pretty similar to two, and one is just a really good album as well. The movie itself is pretty long and boring and tedious, and they're trying to make it like 2001, Kubrick style, slow and big and boom. But the music, the soundtrack is pretty freaking cool. I love it. Um, and and let's just look at the format. Let's let's look at the stuff you get in it. Okay. So on the back, you got. The crew of the Enterprise. Let's see what's going on on the inside. Well, all right. So I did a thing where I put my records in the 
anti-static sleeve, but the sleeve that it originally came in. Dude, you got scenes from the movie. Pretty cool. Then on the other side of the sleeve, you got like all these crazy aliens that aren't even like regular typical Star Trek aliens, just like these things that were in the movie. And I don't think you've ever really seen again. Arcturians, I've heard of those before. Uh, Rigelians, yeah. But they never really showed any of these. Unless it was maybe in the background. But, yeah. So you got like all these cool alien dudes. Oh. Looks like there's another insert. Let's take a look at it. I thought it was a different one. Ah, you had a mini poster of the Enterprise flying through space. That's pretty damn cool. Now, I do have another copy of this, but the record is just like scratched to shit. But I think it's got this poster too. So maybe I'll frame it and hang it one day. And I believe there is a third insert. I remember it, but I can't. Ah, there it is. There it is. If you like that last one with the poster, you can order more posters. You can get the Enterprise flying through space. You can get one with like this creepy, like alien moon or planet with the Enterprise flying overhead. And then you've got this one with an exploded view to where you can see different decks and quarters and all that stuff. And yeah, I think it's cool. And you should too. But if you don't, hey, that's fine. We're an inclusive and diverse and welcoming show here. So we accept all kinds of people, regardless of political affiliation race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or even whether or not you like Star Trek. I guess, I guess we'll accept you too. Star Trek two, not a whole lot in the way of bonus things, but I guess you don't need that whenever you got such a kick ass soundtrack. Let's see, yeah, the original insert is just an Atlantic thingy. Um, even the label is just the generic red and green with the white stripe across it. But I remember looking at that label so much that when I had like uh, some Melvin's records on Atlantic, I was really happy that it had that little label because it reminded me of my Star Trek soundtracks. And I listen to these things pretty much every day. Um, especially being like an artist, it's good. Especially whenever I'm like writing comics or children's books to have music in the background and it's just instrumental. So I'm not like having you know, words of lyrics get in my head when I'm trying to come up with words of a story because that, to me, is a bit of a distraction. So that's where the soundtracks come in handy. And they're just, like, good classical music. Like, a lot of soundtracks today, it's, it's just kind of written as, like, okay, um, there's an exciting chase scene. And then just that for like three minutes. But like these are actual, you know, composed pieces of music. So I think it's cool. And douchebag admission time. I remember when I was about 14, 15, right when I was starting to drive and I had a crush on this girl that I gone to elementary school with also and then she had transferred to my high school and I I had in my head that like we'd be going out 
you know, driving around like in my mom's car and and I was just going to be humming <laughs> the music to the Star Trek 2 soundtrack and then I'm in my head she would say, "Oh, what's that you're humming?" cuz you know, that's what people do and then I'd be like, "Oh, that it's just something, you know, uh for um a classical music piece that I'm composing, you know, whatever, which is just so douchey and awkward and cringy. <laughs> um, and thank God that never actually happened because the only thing worse than planning that, like actually planning for that to happen, would have been if it would have really happened. So. At least I didn't have that, because now there's no permanent record of that ever existing in my head. Uh, I guess I'm going to delete that. No, I'm not. All right, Star Trek Three. My final, final vinyl of this. All right, more pictures on the back from the movie. Let's see. Oh, well, before we check the inserts, let's check this out. Whoa, gatefold. Enterprise and Klingon battlecruiser fighting. Dude, Kirk fighting Doc Brown as a Klingon. Kirk and the crew. Dude, yeah, just awesome. Now, these records did not have any special sleeves, so I've just got them, you know, my little anti static sleeve. Um, but this is a double record. And it kind of confused me because I was like, well, it's only, you know, I've, I've heard this. I know it's only like 40 minutes long. Why would it be on a double record? And then when I finished listening to the first record, I was like, Wait, that last song was the end titles. And then I remembered, I know there's like a kind of disco sounding synthesizer version of the um, of this, the soundtrack main title. And I was like, did they just put that on another album as the bonus track? And they did. And that's why there's all of this space right there. Because it's just right there. So they uh, they filled up the grooves for one song on one side. And then the back is just completely empty there. Nothing. <laughs> just so. Um, but that is cool. Because that's something if... You have a record player with an anti-skate knob. I think you can use that as something to test and see if the tone arm slides around the record or if you have the anti-skate set correctly. I haven't used that. Because um, I think that just occurred to me like a week ago. I was like, oh, I think that that's... Because they make like special records that are like that that you can use that to test with. And I think... That, that could be done with that. Don't worry, I'll check it out and keep you updated because I'm sure all of you are on the edge of your seat being like, oh, well, dude, I, I gotta know the end of this riveting story. All right, so there were and are some of the soundtracks that are not available on vinyl. Pretty much everything after Star Trek V and even Star Trek V is hard to find on vinyl. I've seen it pop up a couple of times. It's not too pricey. Like maybe around 30 bucks. Um, but ones like Star Trek VI and First Contact, which are both really, really, really great albums. I I don't think they made... They, there was like... Uh, it might have been for First Contact. They did an album, and it was only released in Brazil. 
on vinyl and that's like a couple hundred bucks. So I was like, okay, I'll just record these on tape so then I can have the format at my fingertips um, if I don't want to listen to it on vinyl. If maybe I get a Walkman one day um, and don't want to carry around a clunky iPod, I can carry around a streamlined Walkman that's like four times the size of an iPod. I are smart. But no, I just like the format, and so that's what I want to do one day. If my tape deck comes back fixed, dee, 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 dee. so yeah, thanks for hanging out while I rambled on about my personal nerdy geek fandom thing that I'm guessing no one else who watches this is really, really into. But if you are, drop a comment in the comics, comments section saying what you like about Star Trek. Or don't. So, I guess until next time, gang. Live long and prosper.